Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, in the mountaintop where he went to bring his disciples to himself and the people followed and they likewise heard what he had to say, declared himself to be the most radical extremist that Judaism had ever seen because he didn't just take the law. He didn't just say that you should do the law. He didn't just take the law and the prophets and make them into some kind of barrier that would keep the people far from God. No, in fact, he said, this is what you must do. These are the things that I say unto you that you must do and that you must achieve and you must accomplish in your life. Because I say unto you that if you do these things, and the people knew that he was declaring to them that he had the authority to say it because they were shocked. As we read in the scriptures about what Jesus said, we read that at the end of the Sermon on the Mount that he said the people were astonished because he didn't talk like a scribe and he didn't talk like a Pharisee who would say, oh, well, the Bible says, oh, well, the scriptures say, oh, well, the Lord says, oh, well, God said. No, he spoke as he declared that him standing right there, I say unto you, he isn't allowing for any type of interpretation. He isn't allowing you to take what he says and make it into some banner or some high idea. He isn't even saying that you could take this teaching and run with it and change it and rearrange it into something it's not. He's declaring to their face, as he is to you right now, as he is to me, I say unto you, get this right. Don't forget, Jesus is serious about this. He's taking a very dramatic and a very positional statement from the Word of God, as well as Him being that actual living Word of God, and saying, look, as we go back to the end of it, if you do these things I'm telling you to do, then you'll be a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Bingo. And you're blessed, because nothing happens to it. But if you don't do these things, I said, you'll be like a foolish man. You built it on sand. Storms will come, wipe it out. But then He says right before that also something else that scares the living daylights out of people you got to recognize that this is talking to you. This is talking to me. This is talking to the people who claim to know Jesus Christ, who say they are Christian, who have, they say, the power of the God spoken to them in declaring the Word of God and having the anointing, supposedly, of the Holy Spirit and being able to say, have we not cast out demons in thy name? Have we not done all these marvelous things in thy name? Have we not used this power you've given us in your name? And Jesus says, depart from me, for I never knew you. Because it's not about salvation of just, oh, you get to go and do whatever you want to do, and then you can just say that God brought you through, and then give glory to God, because after all, I owe it all to Jesus. No. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, guess what? Jesus said, and Paul tells us later on, if you have the Son, you have life. If you have not the Son of God, you have not life. Whoa. That's why the warning is so real, it's so crucial, and that was John that said it. It's so important to recognize what Jesus said, because Jesus is the one who's saying, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what the law says. I don't care what the prophets say. I don't care what the scribes say. I don't care what the Pharisees says. I don't care what your pastor says. I don't care what religion says. I don't care what your doctrine says. I say unto you. And that's why we read this. That's why we look at this so seriously. We go line by line saying, hey, you know what? Take it in context, read it in context, try to interpret it and rearrange it. But start from the back of it first and read that warning because he said, do it. He didn't say interpret it, he said, do it. So reading in Jesus, we talked about already in the verses before how if we say raka, or if we do all these things against someone, that God is going to hold us accountable. Well, frankly, isn't that true anyways? Of course. He's not saying anything brand new. He's just making it real to you. He's deciding, guess what? I'm here. I'm saying this is reality. This is the fact of what you will be judged on. And that's what we have in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus saying, I am going to be your judge because this is what I'm telling you to do. And if you don't do it, this is the consequence. And you can read about that in the back. But where we are now, as the Sermon on the Mount is in Matthew, we're going through chapter 5 through 8. Seven. He's spoken to them. He's talked about relationships and people like to say, well then, if you read therefore, you have to read before. Then go back and read it. But I'm going to tell you, look at the line. Listen to the word. Each line upon line is very explicit. It has contained in itself its own explanation, its own statement. Jesus is speaking very blunt, very clear. You don't have to extend it or contain it or take it out of context or put it into context. It is alive. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar 
and there remembers that thou brother hath fought against thee. Whoa. We're not going any farther. Why? Because that's what Jesus is saying to do. Jesus literally is stopping there and he's saying, look, if you're coming to me, if you're bringing your gift to God, if you're taking it to the altar, if you're going to church, and you remember your brother has ought against you, think about that. Think about that. Take the time right now. Who has something against you? What have you done about it? Have you done anything about it? Do you even know if somebody has a list of ahas on you? Or a gotcha moment? Or as the people like to say, is there something in you that could be revealed that shows what you really are? Because Jesus is saying, look, I'm God. If your brother has ought against you, do you think you can run away from it and hide? Do you think you don't have to do something about it? Do you think it's okay to just let it go? Stop and read it. Just keep thinking about it when you read it. Think on what Jesus said to do. Because he said, do this. We're not going to go beyond because it doesn't make sense to you. We're not going to stop because there's a pause or a breath. We're going to wait on what the word, word says exactly as it says. Because therefore, if thou brings thy gift to the altar, if you go to the altar with something you're giving, and there remembers that their brother has ought against you, whoa, why would you be thinking about anything else when you go to the altar? And why would that thought come to you that your brother has ought against you? Do you realize that? Have you thought about that? How did you get that thought from this thought? One, you're going to God. Two, you just remembered your brother. You've taken your eyes off of God. You've taken your eyes off of what you're doing. You've taken your eyes off of what you thought you were going to do as being a quote-unquote religious person and doing your duty before God. Are you doing your duty before God? Does your brother have ought against you? So if he's got a problem with you, if he's got an issue with you, if he's got something going on with you, do you even know that? The question would be, why not? Because God does. And apparently, when you went to the altar, when I went to the altar, when we stopped long enough to actually pay attention to something else other than ourselves, we remembered, oh, you know, I remember, I remember, ah, you know, maybe I should go talk to that person. Maybe I should not have spent my time worrying about what I need to do for God as opposed to do with God to my brother because God is bringing directly home issues the heart the perspective there are two things warring here and they're both for your attention one is your religious duty before God bringing your gift to the altar two is your duty or the fact that your mind is no longer on God but is distracted on something else and that's not Satan accusing you. That's not the enemy persecuting you. That's not your flesh with a big guilty conscience or a bad conscience. But it is a consciousness that is called by God to make you think of this. Because Jesus is saying, did you do what I said to do? And what am I telling you to do? The why isn't as important as you'll find out the reason as you continue on doing. But the perfect example of knowing what Jesus said is, have you done this and thought that get it in your mind because then you'll be able to find what it is to do about it you gotta grab a hold of this it means that you could be so busy and so excited and so wound up to go to church and I go oh guess what you know I'm gonna worship and forget about what I did to my 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 children this morning I'm gonna go and forget about what I did to my husband this morning I'm gonna go to church and worship because guess what I can put my stuff away and hide it in a closet for another day because I want to do later what I did not supposed to have done already before I go to church, before I go to the altar, before I bring my gift, before I worship, before I do any other thing, I should what? If you remember, you have ought, or your brother actually has ought against you. Make a list. Do it. Write down what your brother has ought against you. Because until you do, Jesus says, and you'll read it in a minute, 
If you have odd, and your brother has odd against you, there's something you need to do. So right now, I would say stop. Don't read farther what to do. Just figure out if there is anything that is against you. If there is a witness that is against you. If there is a person who has ought against you. Figure it out. You need to deal with it. That's what God is saying. Why we stopped. We're stopping now because God is dealing with this issue personally, directly, incorporating you into the conversation. Will you do what Jesus said? Will you? Because you know what Jesus said. Because you know, and I do too, that our brother might have odd against us. So right now, it's up to you. Will you do as Jesus said?